Hello, welcome to the AtTheRaces.com Big Race Betting Preview. Declan Ricks and Simon Rowlands are with us. You are very welcome too. Don't forget our ARC programme is a separate programme. We've previewed the ARC in detail, horse by horse. In this show, we're looking at all the other uh, big, big races across Saturday and Sunday. Let's start with Saturday and the first Group 1 highlight of the weekend, which is the extreme staying challenge of the Prix de Cadran. Uh, we'll start with you, Simon, uh, if we can, and with last year's race, of course, because the defending champion, lest we forget, is Princess Zoe. Uh, she won the, the, the Cadran last year. She's gone on, of course, to show that she's a, a top-class uh, uh, mayor as well. What do you make of her? Yeah, um, she was shown in a really good light this time last year in a race over a marathon distance on heavy ground and run at a really strong pace. Uh, she's shown since she doesn't need that to run well, but um, uh, it would be a different proposition against better horses, I think. And um, she's been slightly found out. She hasn't won since this day last year, um, whilst running well mm. in, in the interim. Um, she's shown this was no fluke, though, yeah. Simon, hasn't she? Yeah. You know, it was a bit of a fairy tale story in some respects on the day, but absolutely. But the horse she managed to reel in here, Al Quinn, um, is nowhere near the same caliber as a couple of the horses that she's up against on on Sunday. No, that's probably a fair comment, including, of course, uh, Declan Ricks, the staying king that is Stradivarius, who um, has been sort of remodelled as an art course that didn't work out back to staying trips but not always firing perhaps at his brilliant best where, where do you stand on Stradivarius you, you still with him yeah look I think um, this race you know there's not a lot between Stradivarius Princess Zoe and Trusha but I think Stradivarius is probably not coming back to his very best but he he, he is in form I, I can't get out of my head that day uh, at Ascot when he was beaten showing that Luke, our own Luke Harvey interviewed Frankie at the start of the race, and he just asked him how he was, and Frankie said, I hope this horse wakes up. So, you know, that's not the, the Stradivarius we know and love. You know, there's usually uh, bits of his anatomy floating around. He's up on his hind legs, you no know, acting the boy. Um, but I think this day at, at Doncaster, you know, the, in the Doncaster Cup, visually he was very good, and he's, I think he's getting back in good form. You know, you can, visually you can see him, how he travels through the race. He looked like he was in good order. I just think now... At this stage of his career, I just like a, a, an honest gallop throughout suits him because he stays well. He still has the gears, as we can see here. Um, so yeah, I think marginally just preference for for Stradivarius in this race. But you know, Prince has always beat shaping like she's in good order lately. She loved going back up and tripping. Trusha, as we know, is a is a high class a high class there. Yes, beaten at Royal Ascot, of course, this year's Stradivarius. And uh, some criticism of the ride uh, Frankie gave him that day, including from the, the trainer, John Gostin, himself. I don't know that he lived with subjectivists that day myself. And I wonder, I wonder, Simon, with, whether this year's Stradivarius will live with Trushan, if Trushan's at his best. He was brilliant in the, in the big staying race in, on Champions Day at Ascot last year. Where do you stand on Trushan? I'm a big fan. Um, he was as you say, superb in, the, in, in this race that we're about to see. This is the two miles. He was absolutely taking off at the end. He's not run at beyond two miles so far, but I think despite being a slightly free-going horse early on in his races sometimes, we can see that he's a bit of a stamina glutton and um, could well come into his own. He's um, been carefully campaigned this year, but the Cadran has been the plan recently, at least. Uh, probably followed by an attempt at repeating this Ascot race. Um, I think, whilst I agree with Declan that there's little between the three main contenders here, I think he's the one with the potential to actually step forward further, and um, he'd be my selection at the prices. Yeah, I, I, I'd be in the true Shan camp as well. The, the idea that he might actually improve, for, not a given, of course, he may, he may go backwards for the, the, the very extreme extended uh, trip, but if he does, then he's going to be a, a fearsome horse, I think, in that. Uh, one person who's certainly be looking forward uh, to True Shan, of course, is regular pilot Holly Doyle. You get Holly's views on the website, of course, on attheracers.com forward slash Holly. Always well worth checking out, not just for her rides each day, of course, but she's often got interesting insights on uh, races she's ridden in or other, or other races going on on the day. Brilliant campaign for Holly once again this year. 
potential future champion jockey. Some of us think so. And you get our views on the website free at the race.com forward slash Holly exclusively on at the races. Uh, before we leave Saturday uh, in Paris, let's touch on the, uh, the Royal Year. Uh, which is on the Saturday as well for the Phillies and Mayors. Rabia, I think Declan more likely to go uh, for this race in the arc by the sound of it. I, I've been a bit underwhelmed, if I'm honest, with Rabia uh, this year after high hopes. What, what have you made? Yes, uh, I, I agree in all counts. It sounds like connections are edging here uh, to go in this race instead of the arc, Sean. I think she was probably kept in training to go for the arc, but... Uh, as you said in the second part of your uh, analysis there, that she's been a bit underwhelming in the, in the early and middle part of the season. Uh, while the case, this day I thought she was getting back somewhere near her best. Um, I just love how she travels through the race. She looked nice and bright, happy. She moved well and she, she picked up well and, and, won very, and won nicely at the line. She was a little bit fortunate in that the third horse there, the Aga Khan horse, Valia, absolutely fell out of the stalls. I think the, the horses were in the stalls this day for ages. They had a stalls problem, and Valia came out the worst of that. But I, I think Rabi is getting uh, back to her best. Uh, trained by Jean-Claude Rouget, a man who peaked soft sass for this meeting last year, we shouldn't forget. And, you know, I think that's what the plan was originally, to keep her in training to go for the Yaris. She probably hasn't progressed like they thought, so this looks a, a step down in class for her. Um, although Free Wind, who I know Simon likes, is going to give her a, 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 pretty, a pretty good race. Yeah, and uh, now that we should consider uh, entries I see for the Phillies and Mayors on Champions Day is um, free wind, uh, Simon. She's beaten Burgerita. I quite like Burgerita, actually, for another race, which we'll come to in due course. What do you make of free wind? Big fan. Um, her win in the Park Hill Stakes at Doncaster last time slightly took me by surprise, um, but it was really impressive. Um, she won by clear margins. These, these aren't especially good fillies she's beating, but... She's absolutely smashed them up. Um, unlike Rabia, she's proven at this sort of trip of around 14 furlongs. I'm not absolutely convinced Rabia will benefit from it, but this is free wind, very much benefiting from it at Doncaster that day. She's going the right way, and um, she would be my, my fancy marginally in this contest. Yeah, this was a very impressive win at Doncaster. As I say, the... the the success in France, which I think was only Group 3, wasn't it, the, the, the Deauville win, but beat Bergerito, who I think is very smart indeed, potentially, ran well in the Vermeer, uh, that one. So I think the form stacks up quite nicely there uh, for free win. So a couple to watch out there uh, for there in the Royal Year. Uh, don't forget that... Uh we're the only place you can watch it all on Sky Sports Racing, of course, and you'll get it all on the website as well on atraces.com. But uh, if you want to follow all this great action live over that weekend, Saturday and Sunday, Sky Sports Racing, each and every race for you here on the channel throughout uh, the weekend. Uh, let's move forward to Sunday. What a day that is. The arc we've previewed in a separate programme. Let's talk, though, about the other great races on Sunday, starting with the pre-Marcel Boussac. And uh, one place to start with this, I think, is the Philly Reclet. It'd be fascinating to see what price she is, Declan. Uh, Andre Farb... Um, has said some extraordinary things about this. For a man who doesn't say much about his horses, he said, she could be one of the best I've trained. Uh, he's already talking about the arc for next year. And uh, the Boussac uh, was earmarked for her as soon as she won her second start. And this was her only her second start. The Colt she beats, I think, is, is considered to be pretty smart as well. Uh, we don't have a lot of evidence to go on, but there's an awful lot of hype. Yeah, yeah, there is. Yeah, to be fair to her, she I think she's done all she can in, in two starts. She she's won very impressively. She was quite green the first day, a little bit slow away. Uh, she looks far more clued up and um, sharp and just all around better this day, as we can see on the VT. But I, what I love about this filly, Sean, is she she really does stretch. She's got a cracking attitude, and you know she's by Frankel. I think her dam was a group one, a Grade One winner in America. Um, she's been running in slow run race, and I think when this filly gets into a well run race, we'll probably see that really relentless stride that she's had. Uh, but look, she. She's been good and she's unbeaten in two starts. But, you know, the real talking point here is the words of Andre Fab. He's, you know, he's, as you said, a man who doesn't say a lot about his horses, uh, certainly not um, kind of put them on a pedestal like this. Uh, so, you know, they, he must be seeing some special things at home with her. Um, we haven't seen it on the racetrack yet, but maybe that's because she's been running in slow run races. Uh, I'm, looking re I'm looking forward to seeing what she can do on the day. She, uh, she, she looks a, a cracking prospect, but I don't think she's as good as her trainer says yet. We haven't seen it on the track. 
But at the same time, I'm kind of mesmerised by uh, Fab's words. Yeah, me too. Me too. Well, well, the Colt that she beat there won, won the Colts uh, maiden on, this, on the same day that they both won uh, their, their first start, Simon. Um, I, I, I kind of ha hate being drawn in by these kinds of things. It's not like me. But I am drawn in by, by, by Favre's comments and by uh, visually uh, what she's done with Claire. I'm relying on you, though, to be the voice of reason in, in, in this conversation and give us some actual cold, hard facts. Are, are we getting a, a bit overexcited about Reclet on not very much actual evidence? Uh, yeah, well, for a start, that race was a class two. It wasn't a group race. That, um, the level of form is a bit lower than it might have been. And prior to that, she won a maiden. Absolutely really impressive so far. The sectionals in that last race, on my figures, make her 104 rated filly. That puts her up there with some of the horses with proven form in group company, but it puts her up there with them or near to them rather than ahead of them. And it, I think given her reputation, she's going to be over bet. Um, amongst her rivals, um, you've got a filly from Britain, Mise en Seine, uh, a filly with a French name, but mm -hmm. trained in Britain, who's a seven furlong winner of a Group 3 at Goodwood last time. You've got the 1-2 uh, in Ireland, in the Moglia Stud Stakes, I believe, uh, which is Discoveries and Agatha. And uh, they've, they've achieved a plenty on paper. I will probably, almost certainly, be siding with proven group form against Reclette, whilst acknowledging that she couldn't really have done very much more than she has so far, admittedly in lower company. Now, that's, that's probably a fair summary. Some very, very, very solid group form coming from Britain Island into that race, that's for sure. Uh, let's move on. Uh, around about 1.55 hour time, I think, uh, uh, next up will be the, uh, the Lagardère. Um, we're not 100% what will go, I guess, Declan, but anything caught your eye so far for this? Um, it sounds like Ebro River is going to go to Hugo, Hugo Palmer horse. Um, as long as as long as it, the ground doesn't get too quick, I think it's what Connection said. Um, you know, he's obviously he won the Phoenix Stakes in, in good style. Maybe, maybe a little bit flattered by the bear form and that he was given a good ride by Shane Foley down that kind of standside rail at the Curra. Um, but you know, he ran he ran well again in the National Stakes. Uh, a little worried that he might just be a little bit better at over six furlongs, Sean. But, you know, if, if the race maps is a typical French race where they kind of sit and sprint and he gets an easy lead, um, I think he's a, he's a smart two-year-old that he's got the form in the book to be, to be very dangerous. But again, it's, as you kind of said there, just as we started, it's, it's hard to know exactly what's going to run here. So it's hard yeah. to have a, a very strong view. We'll see if we see uh, Ebro River or not. Simon, in terms of either the home team uh, in France or, or over here in Britain or in Ireland, um, on the clock, has anything caught, you, caught your eye as a Lagardère runner, potentially? I'm with Declan. I'm thinking that Ebro River has got a pretty good chance here. He sets a pretty high standard. Uh, if you're going to have a horse who doesn't quite get seven furlongs um, and is at least as good at six, which Ebro River might be, then this is the track in which to try it. The, um, the 1,400 metres is actually slightly short of that distance and they go around a couple of bends early doors. I think it'll suit him very well. Um, and he sets a pretty high standard. There's a horse in France called um, Ancient Rome, who's won, I think it's last three races, pretty impressively. But French juvenile form is generally being pretty weak again this year uh, with plenty of raiders winning their better races. Mm. And I wasn't really blown away by this performance. Um, the horse that finishes second um, called Scherzo uh, actually runs slightly quicker late on than Ancient Rome. Ancient Rome's probably going to have to find, I don't know, four or five lengths on what he achieved here. And whilst that's possible, um, you won't find me backing him to do it. No, so it's a lot of lengths to, uh, to, to be fair to, uh, to be finding. Uh, don't forget, of course, markets are developing on some of these races at the time we're recording. Keep up to date with all of the markets on attheraces.com. You can see them all on the, on the website, also on the At The Races app, and take those markets with you. Place your bets via the website or indeed via the At The Races app as well, and all of that being uh, constantly updated, as I say. Let's move on. Uh, one of the big races of the weekend, of course, is the Prix de l'Opera. Uh, we've seen uh, some wonderful, wonderful mayors uh, win this in recent years. Let's talk about this year's uh, contenders. Here's the market for you. 
order here there four to one love uh, we think we'll see in the arc uh, Tiona ditto of course Rabia maybe but maybe the royal year so there's a lot of uh, um, question marks over uh, potential runners there but where should we be looking uh, uh, Simon in terms of opera contenders who's who's coming out top for you um, Altaria is sets sets the standard here of those certain or seemingly certain to run. I've been a little bit disappointed with her at times this season. Um, although the run we're about to see at Deauville was a pretty good one. She gets checked early in the straight. She looks like she's about going to win this, but just gets run out of it late on. There's actually a filly who finishes behind her here in the grey and white stripes called Ambition, um, who finishes has the second quickest sectionals in the closing stages here. Uh, I think she would have gone pretty close with um, her run starting a bit sooner. She's a likely race uh, mare who's only run four times in the last couple of years, I believe, but she's very classy ambition on her day. Um, and I think she's a, a long priced contender uh, to go really rather well in this. Um, she was fourth in this, but she was fifth in the opera last year, which was a much better contest, I thought, won by Tanawa. Yeah. So ambition at a big price is one I quite fancy there. That's a, that's a really interesting shout, because she was slightly missed in the opera last year. She was certainly missed in that uh, Romane uh, market-wise, uh, 25 to 1, 28 to 1, something like that. And she may well be missed again, because she's a, a, a less sort of stellar uh, yard ambition. So ambition one to watch out for in the opera. What about you, Declan? Yeah, look, I thought uh, kind of going with the obvious again here, so apologies, but I thought Odaria would, would, would go well. Um, I just think this filly's been crying out to get a, a, a good run race you know, with maybe you know getting plenty of cover so she could just switch off. It was disappointing that she got mugged that day by Grand Glory, but I think if you go back and watch the early and middle stages of the race, you can see why, because she just travelled far too, too well in, um, in the jockey's hands. So it'll be interesting to see who rides. William Buick has ridden her before, but I just think if this, it might be an honest gallop here with Sabia Spain running. If she goes out and sets an honest pace, I think that will really help Odaria switch off and just utilise her energy better. And, you know, it, I would say if you fancy a horse in this race, you should think about backing one soon because it looks like it will cut up. Tiona, love, they're not going to run. Um, Petit Coco, I think, is not going to run either. So, uh, or La Petit Coco, should I say, is not going to run. So, uh, Lady Bort. Both up is another who won't go. So if you fancy one here, it's maybe potentially exploring having an anti-post bet because I can see this race cutting up. Yep, I do fancy one here, actually, and I'll be backing Bergerita in this, Andre Favs Philly, who was intended to come to the Ribblesdale at Royal Ascot back in the day. Everyone's forgotten that, and she's continuing to, I think, progress nicely. For me, she was one of the last off the bridle in the Vermeer last time, which is a nice route into um, uh, the pre de Opera. So Bergerita, for me, one of the bets of the weekend. Every race... Uh, all through the weekend, live, of course, on Sky Sports, doc, uh, Sky Sports Racing. And, of course, you can watch it all on the website as well on attheraces.com too, don't forget. But we'll be uh, live Sky Sports Racing all the way through Saturday and Sunday. Now, traditionally, the British and Irish do pretty well at sprinting in France. So we've got the Prix de l'Abbé on Sunday. And, uh, well, it's going to be an interesting one this year. Maybe Suesa uh, uh, could turn out to be the horse to beat uh, this time. 94, 92 glass slippers next in these prices current at the time of recording but of course keep up to date on the at the races website right Declan kick us off what wins the Abbey oh Sean you make it sound so easy um <laughs> I think I just probably at the price I'd give glass slippers a nod I've liked what I've seen from her lately um you know if she's been in training now for, uh, for two or three years we know what she's like uh, as the year goes on she gets better and better for whatever reason uh, you know she that's just the way she operates um, she's won this race before I think she was second in it last year so the course and distance is no is no issue to her and like I say I thought she ran well behind Swayze and the King George at Goodwood uh, and then again she was, she ran very well I don't think she was fully fit last time out in the flying five at the Cora I think she maybe got there a little bit too soon as well she pricked her ears and then she got a little bit tired late. But she just looks to me like she's working her way back to form, Sean. So I think if she takes another step forward here, the Kevin Ryan team are in good order, course and distance form. Uh, need a little bit of luck with the draw that she gets a low draw. I think uh, she's got plenty going for her. Yeah, she was drawn 10 last year, which shows that you can run very well in an abbey from a, a higher draw, but otherwise 2-4... Uh, Eight, six, seven, three. The uh, the first half a dozen home in in the race last year, and it's going to be a big factor again, presumably, Simon. The draw. 
Yeah, I, I think so. Overall, t uh, taken over the last you know, 10, 15 years, load numbers have done fared much better than you might imagine. And two years ago, we had a, a stall three, beat stall one, beat stall five, and beat stall four. Um, doesn't always pan out like that. And I think glass slippers at her best is, um, you know, a very good sprinter. And um, she managed to all but overcome that last year. It was interesting that in that VT we just saw there in third place, Liberty Beach um, finished third. She's not done an awful lot this year, but I think she's had one or two excuses along the way. And I would expect her to be really well suited by conditions. So um, flat five furlongs, bit of give in the ground, Liberty Beach. I could see her returning to form, <clears throat> which may be good enough to see her in the mix again. Yep, could be. But it could be that the French win their own race this year. It doesn't often happen in the Abbey, but Suez a uh, very strong favourite at the head of the market for <laughs> the Abbey. Nothing wrong with perming a few little saucy perms of the, of the low-drawn horses if you fancy throwing a few little stakes for a big, big return. Let's move on because we want to squeeze one more in the foray uh, for uh, Sunday as well, the seven furlong uh, trip. Although I see, Simon, you, you've spotted this one is actually a bit shorter than the advertised 1,400 metres as well. Good to know it's not just us that uh, doesn't measure our race courses properly. Mariana Foot, uh, three to has been carrying all before him, very, very progressive, of course. Can he keep going, Simon? Well, he's won his last eight races, so um, it would be a bit churlish to say, no, he can't. Um, I do think that prior to last time, and we're just seeing the video where he, he beat Starman, who didn't really get home here over an extended six furlongs on a, a good soft ground. Prior to this run, Mariana Foote's form was good, but not brilliant. Really showed him in a good light this race this day. Uh, he ran in the foray last year and finished right down the back uh, when he had been in quite good form prior to that. I'm not going to knock him. Um, he's suited by conditions and he's a very smart performer, but um, favourite tells you that everybody else has cottoned on to that by now. And um, I, I reckon it's worth looking outside him to something at a bit of a longer price. Give us one. Creative Force, if it runs, um, is a rock solid horse who would be very well suited by this kind of long six furlong, short seven furlong scenario. He's a real tough individual and he's been a, had one or two slight excuses. July Cup, he got slightly carved up on the rail and um, it didn't go quite right for him in the Haydock Sprint Cup last time either. I, I could see him going very close. OK, that's a strong case for Creative Force, who could, could be a big price. We're coming to the end of our time, Declan. Anything catch your eye in the, um, in the foray? Um, potentially Space Blues. Uh, I think he's, his peak level form is maybe just marginally better what Mariana Foote has, has been doing. He hasn't reached that level yet this season in, in his two runs, but he's got better in his two, two starts. Uh, obviously, again, with Charlie Appleby, top-class trainer, Charlie will need to um, get a little bit more out of him to win on what we've seen this year. But uh, like, like Mariana Foote, he's a, a really straightforward, strong travelling horse with a great attitude. So uh, as we don't know the full feel for this, but this could be a crack in betting heat. You know, um, Mariana Foote, Space Blue, Sacred, maybe Order of Australia, Create Force. Um, you know, it could be a good race. So um, I'm really looking forward to getting some decks through. It'll uh, put some more flesh on the bones for us. Yeah, absolutely. There, there, there could be some real depth in there. I'd be a, a Space Blues fan, particularly given the season that his team are having there. Mariana Foot has to come to an end at some point, doesn't it? But doesn't show any signs of stopping so far. Currently heading the market. Keep up to date on the website, of course, on attheraces.com or on the At The Races app, which you can download onto your smartphone or device. It's time to recap. What are our, our bets over the weekend? Uh, away from the arc. These are all the supporting uh, races on Saturday and Sunday. Simon has given us the following. Here we go. Simon Rowlands bets the Prix du Cadran Truchan, possibly an improver for the step up in trip. Free Wind, who was devastating at Doncaster. Can she go in in the Royal Year? She might be a price as well. Uh, Liberty Beach, 
uh, in the Abbey there, one to throw into uh, the mix as well. So make quite a good case for creative force on the undercard as well. These are Declan Ricks' best bets over the weekend. The Prida Royal Royale for Rabia. Can she bounce back uh, over the longer trip? Many will hope so. Orderia there in the Prida L'Opera. Brilliant filly, of course, and uh, could be another big day for her. And Glass Slippers, who went so close in the Abbey last year, can she win this year? I'd be a fan of True Shan along with uh, Simon there. I'd also throw in Burgerita in the Opera, who was a big price when last I looked. Check her price on the website on attheraces.com. Burgerita in the Opera would be one of my best bets on uh, the supporting card on Sunday. Don't forget, all of the racing on Sunday is live and exclusive on Sky Sports Racing. You'll see every race. We'll be on course. We'll have our team on course for you all day as well. The website team will be doing a great job keeping you up to date on all the news from Paris as well on attheraces.com. But for now, our thanks to Simon Rowlands and to Declan Ricks. We wish you bonne chance in your punting in France.